targeted diesel subsidies to be redirected to the people. Express school bus operators should not raise fares. Assalamu alaikum Badani. I'm Mohammed Amin Carlos and you're watching Malaysia Tonight. Well, the savings from targeted diesel subsidies will be redirected to the people, particularly through an improved public transport and the Rahma Cash Contribution, or STR. Acknowledging that the targeted subsidy is not a popular move, well, Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim stated the measure would result in savings of 4 billion ringgit annually and has undergone thorough research at numerous levels before being implemented. Kalau diesel itu sebahagiannya adalah untuk menampung keperluan pengangkutan awam. Bayangkan STR kita untuk 9 juta orang yang direct cash subsidi itu 10 bilion ringgit. Kemudian beberapa langkah-langkah lain kita ambil. Jadi wang itu bukan untuk naikkan elaun menteri ataupun ialah untuk kepentingan-kepentingan lain. Saya tumpukan hal ini. Jadi Speaking during a gathering of finance ministry staff today, the Prime Minister also emphasized that the targeted diesel subsidy was implemented to ensure it did not benefit the very wealthy and foreigners. Saya beritahu rakan-rakan di Jemaah Menteri, sudah itu si Amir Hamzah ada, saya kata kita kena buat keputusan yang baik. Iaitu sementara kita harus bantu rakyat, majoritinya, kita tidak harus beri subsidi kepada golongan maha kaya, industri-industri besar dan orang asing. Bukan diskriminasi kepada orang asing. Karena orang asing itu tidak bayar cukai. Dan cukai levy yang sangat kecil. Jadi oleh demikian, tanggungjawab kita yang pertama ialah kepada warga negara kita. He noted that the implementation of targeted diesel subsidy has been well received by parties within the unity government and some opposition parties as well as it will be monitored to prevent issues. Well, on another note, the Prime Minister gave assurance that he will defend civil servants who perform their duties well and fend off pressure from the looter circles. Well, Dato Sri Anwar said he had informed Chief Secretary to the Government, Tan Sri Muhammad Zuki Ali, to defend civil servants who carry out their duties responsibly. I will protect them as long as they are doing their best job. I will not terikut dengan tekanan puak-puak penyakau ini. Jadi saya harap sudah faham itu. Lagi sudah jalankan tugas dengan baik, dengan betul. Ini saya bagi jaminan. Dan saya tegaskan, saya akan pertahankan. Banyak kes-kes di mana tindakan diambil dan tekanan di peringkat tertinggi untuk um, mengambil tindakan kepada pegawai-pegawai yang menjalankan tugas. Saya tidak saya tengok. Kalau dia jalankan tugas, saya beritahu kes saya, no, will defend him. Dr. Sri Anwar, who is also the finance minister, said this was because there were many reported cases of actions being taken against civil servants despite performing their duties well, following pressure from the top-level officials. He also insisted that he will continue to do his best for the country despite being criticized from various aspects and wants to prove that not all politicians are looters, arrogant and abuse the people. Well, express bus and school bus operators should not raise fares following the implementation of targeted diesel subsidy in Peninsular Malaysia. Well, Transport Minister Anthony Logue said this is because the diesel subsidy continues to be given to bus operators through subsidized diesel fleet cards under the subsidized diesel control system or SKDS. Mereka tak ada kesan dari segi kenaikan uh, harga diesel. Sebab pengusaha-pengusaha bas sekolah, pengusaha-pengusaha bas ekspres ini sudah sedia menerima subsidi dan tidak ada perubahan dari segi itu kerana mereka diberikan free card dan harga untuk SKDS 1.0 iaitu pengusaha-pengusaha bas ekspres dan bas sekolah kekal pada harga RM1.88 1 liter untuk diesel. 
While speaking today, Lok said the fares for express buses cannot be increased arbitrarily because they are under the purview of the Land Public Transport Agency. On the other hand, as for school buses, the government does not control the price. However, parent-teacher associations in schools are encouraged to hold discussions with school bus operators to find a suitable common ground that benefits all parties. Well, the fleet card issued under the subsidized diesel control system or SKDS for 33 types of public transport and goods vehicles has a filling limit in terms of letters, not the total value. Well, Deputy Finance Minister Lim Ho Ying said details on the utilization of the fleet card will be announced by Finance Minister 2, Dato Sri Amir Hamza Azizan. But definitely there's a, there is a limit. There is a limit in terms of it. But uh, I think we, we are yet to fix that limit. Lim was meant after opening the fourth Malaysia Tax Policy Forum organised by the International Strategy Institute today. We'll ask about complaints from private diesel vehicle owners that the 200 ringgit monthly cash subsidy under the Budi Madani initiative is insufficient. Lim said that amount is adequate based on studies and engagements that have been conducted. She said the 200 ringgit will be maintained for now but will be reviewed to see if there is a need to increase the amount after receiving feedback. The Communications Ministry is in the final process of developing a chat bot facility in the WhatsApp application to curb the spread of fake news. Well, according to Minister Fahmi Fadil, discussions regarding the matter would be held with Meta Platforms Incorporated soon. Waktu ini ada beberapa isu teknikal yang sedang diteliti dan kita juga sedang berusaha untuk pastikan aplikasi tersebut dapat menjawab isu-isu yang dibangkitkan pertama dalam pelbagai bahasa. Jadi bukan bahasa Melayu saja tapi juga bahasa Inggeris dan bahasa Cina dan sebagainya. Jadi kita mungkin uh, pada ketika kita rasmikan nanti, kita luncurkan nanti, mungkin ada beberapa bahasa utama. Tapi kita akan kembangkan sebab dia berteraskan AI. Well, Fahmi was met after the ministry's monthly assembly today. In a speech earlier, he said that while waiting for the chatbot facility to be launched, he called on the ministry staff to be on the front line in countering disinformation and fake news on social media, including WhatsApp, to ensure that only accurate information reaches the people. Coming up next, Malaysia's economic transformation to accelerate this year. Well, Malaysia's economic transformation momentum is expected to accelerate in 2024, reflecting strong fundamentals and investors' confidence supported by sound policies. Finance Minister 2, Dato Sri Amir Hamza Azizan, said... The Madani economy framework has yielded positive results as demonstrated by the continued expansion of the economy. The domestic economy <clears throat> encouragingly grew at 4.2% in the first quarter of 2024, indicating that the government's policies and economic management are effective. With quarter 1's 2024's growth exceeding Bloomberg's consensus estimate forecast of 3.9%, the government is optimistic that the Malaysian GDP is well placed to expand within the official forecast range of 4 to 5% for 2024. The minister said this in his keynote address at the MIA International Accountants Conference 2024 today. Dato Sri Amir Hamza noted that global investors are increasingly interested in the reform narrative as reflected in the optimism in the domestic capital markets. Now, this is exemplified by the FBM KLCI reaching new highs and the significant foreign direct investments from global companies such as Microsoft, Google, ByteDance, Infinity, Technologies and Tesla. Well, emphasizing the role of effective tax policies is crucial in fostering ongoing growth and stability in light of economic progress.
Deputy Finance Minister Lim Huying said tax revenues are essential for supporting public services, infrastructure development and social programs which are fundamental to the nation's prosperity. Developing an efficient and fair tax system is particularly challenging for countries like ours that are integrating into the global economy. An ideal tax system should generate essential revenue without excessive government borrowing or discouraging economic activities. Well, met today at an event in Putrajaya, she added that developing efficient tax systems is not easy involving informal employment in agriculture or small and informal businesses. Well, Lim said their fluctuating earnings and cash transactions make it difficult to calculate income taxes and also data reliability as the informal structure of many economies and financial constraints make it challenging to generate reliable statistics. Nonetheless, she said the the importance of a well-designed and effectively administered tax system cannot be overstated. Well, almost 130,000 paddy farmers in Peninsula Malaysia will receive cash assistance amounting to 210 ringgit per hectare per season through the increase in ploughing incentive rate. Now, the government will also introduce a new harvesting incentive. In a statement today, the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security, or KPKM, said the ploughing incentive rate has been increased and the harvesting incentive was introduced by the Ministry on 27th May. KPKM has taken steps to improve the existing rate for ploughing incentive from 100 ringgit per hectare per season to 160 ringgit per hectare per season. On 27th May, KPKM announced that the diesel subsidy to fishermen would be maintained and announced an increase in the rate of ploughing incentive as well as the introduction of new harvesting incentive for paddy farmers. The Ministry of Finance, the MOF, has announced the implementation of the Madani Subsidy Assistance Program of Budi Madani, including the agro or agri-commodity Budi category for qualified farmers, breeders and aquaculture operators. Well, meanwhile, Agriculture and Food Security Minister Datu Sri Mohamed Sabu reiterated that paddy farmers will not be affected by the targeted diesel subsidies as they are the targeted group to receive the said subsidies. However, the government officials will be going to the ground to meet the parties involved and clarify the matter. Semua perusahaan padi yang menggunakan enjin diesel semua diberi subsidi. Akan bagi penjelasan dan sekarang Menteri Keuangan sendiri turun merata iaitu Menteri Keuangan 2 dan sampailah. Dan sekarang ni ada sedikit kekeliruan saya rasa ini sementara saja lah. Dan perkara ini benda baru yang diperkenalkan di Malaysia yang dipanggil subsidi bersasar. Bukan dibuang subsidi, bersasar itu. And he said this after an engagement program with Pulau Pinang Farmers in conjunction with the Tasi Area Farmers Organization annual general meeting in Nibong Tabal today. Well, he said the government's recent implementation of targeted diesel subsidies does not mean that the subsidies are being removed, but instead will be redistributed to those who truly need it. The ringgit has a strong potential to appreciate to 4 ringgit and 42 cent against the US dollar by year end. In a note, Kananga Research said although the latest United States non farm payroll figures surpass expectations, thus delaying rate cut expectations until November, the research firm observes persistent weaknesses in the US economy. And this includes prolonged job searches for seekers, cost cutting layoffs by firms, and the looming threat of financial strain due to mounting credit card debt and increased mortgage bills. And it said this builds the case for a U.S. Federal Reserve rate cut in September, adding combined with Malaysia's solid fundamentals, the ringgit is set to appreciate. Kananga Research noted that the ringgit rebounded in May, becoming one of the best-performing ASEAN currencies as the U.S. dollar index depreciated. Additionally, the ringgit was bolstered by Bank Negara Malaysia's decision to maintain the policy rate and robust domestic macroeconomic readings. Meanwhile, inflation rates are expected to remain stable, averaging around 2.7% in 2024. 
Malaysia's wholesale and retail trade expanded 6.6% year on year in April with sales of 144.9 billion ringgit. In a statement today, Chief Statistician Dr. Sri Muhammad Mo Dr. Sri, Dr. Mohamed Uzir Mahidin said the increase was driven by a 5.5% rise in the retail trade subsector to 63.8 billion ringgit. The wholesale trade also grew by 4.8% or 2.9 billion ringgit to 63.8 billion ringgit, followed by motor vehicles with an increase of 18.1% or 2.6 billion ringgit. For monthly comparison, wholesale and retail trade fell 0.6% from the previous month due to the decrease recorded in motor vehicles and wholesale trade, which declined 8.2% and 0.4% respectively. On performance of the subsectors, he said the 5.5% year-on-year growth in April's retail trade was contributed by non-specialized store sales, which grew 5.2% or 1.2 billion ringgit to 24.7 billion ringgit. He also noted that increase of 4.8% year-on-year in the wholesale trade subsector in April was supported by other specialized wholesale, which rose 1 billion ringgit or 4.2% to 23.9 billion ringgit. Still ahead, animals killed as fire rips through Bangkok pet market. The news continues. Malaysia urges for full and swift implementation of the United Nations Security Council's Resolution 2735 in order to alleviate the suffering and stop the killings of Palestinians. Now, the Foreign Ministry in a statement said Malaysia welcomed the adoption of the UNSC's resolution. And according to Wisma Putra, the resolution calls for the immediate full and complete ceasefire, release of hostages, exchange of Palestinian prisoners, and full with withdrawal of Israeli forces based on the three-phase proposal by the United States. It also calls for an effective distribution of humanitarian assistance at scale and the commencement of a reconstruction plan for Hazza. Now, Malaysia reiterates its unwavering support for the establishment of an independent and sovereign state of Palestine based on the pre-1967 border with East Jerusalem as its capital and the admission of Palestine as a full member of the United Nations. The resolution penned by the U.S. received 14 votes in favor at the 15-member Security Council with Russia abstaining. Well, a fire ripped through pet shops next to Bangkok's famed Chatuchak market earlier today, killing caged dogs, cats, birds and snakes and damaging more than 100 stalls. Now, the fire is believed to have started in the ornamental fish zone in Sri Somrad market, adjacent to the bigger Chatuchak around 4 a.m. And according to police, the blaze spread to more than 100 stalls across about 1,300 square meters. And there were no reports of human casualties, but multiple cage animals were found dead at the market, which belongs to the state railway of Thailand. The Bangkok Metropolitan Administration has set up a presence at the scene to gather information from affected shop owners. The fires have previously damaged sections of the neighboring tightly packed Chatterjack market which sells everything from antiques to electronics to dishwares and food. The market is a top tourist draw but also a popular shopping destination for locals. Taiwanese authorities identified a Chinese national arrested for illegally entering the island by boat as a former naval captain, saying they could not rule out the possibility the incursion was a 
test of their defenses. Now, Taiwan's Coast Guard picked up the man on Sunday after his vessel collided with other boats on the Tamsui River, which flows from the capital Taipei to the island's northern coast. Now, Taiwan's Ocean Affairs Minister Quan Biling said the man had served as a captain in the Chinese Navy, adding he was one of 18 purported defectors seen over the past year or so, and all of whom claimed they admired self-rule Taiwan's democratic way of life and came for freedom. Taiwanese Premier Cho Jung Tai told reporters that all national security units and teams are paying close attention and investigations have been launched. Taiwan is routinely on guard for spies from China. Sports OCM needs to discuss before setting Olympic medal target. Well, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, or KBS, has reintroduced the disbursement of allocations through the empowerment method to 19 national sports associations, or PSKs, covering 23 types of sports disciplines for the podium and national backup programs. Now, Minister Hannah Yeo said the selected PSK need to comply with several conditions set by the Ministry, such as establishing a special account for receiving funds from the National Sports Council, that's MKN, and allowing the account to be audited by auditors appointed by MKN. Hannah said the method implemented through the Badani government budget is based on the concept of accountability and responsibility of the PSK. Pertama, mereka perlu menandatangani perjanjian yang telah dilaksanakan pagi ini. Keduanya, Persatuan Sukan Kebangsaan mesti mewujudkan akaun khas bagi penerimaan peruntukan kewangan Majlis Sukan Negara supaya akaun itu senang diaudit. Ketiga, membenarkan akaun tersebut diaudit oleh juru audit yang dilantik oleh Majlis Sukan Negara. She said this to reporters after attending the signing of a memorandum of agreement between MSN and PSK in Bukit Jalil today. She said for this year, disbursements will be made in two phases from June to August and September to December. Hannah said the allocation for each PSK varies according to their needs, which will be determined by the MSN committee based on the competitions agreed upon. Hannah hopes this effort will have a positive impact on the development of national sports and produce more high-performing athletes to represent Malaysia on the international stage. And today, with less than 50 days left to the Paris Olympic Games 2024, the Olympic Council of Malaysia, OCM, needs to hold a discussion with Youth and Sports Minister Hannah Yeo first, before setting medal targets ahead of the four yearly games, which will open on 26 July to the 11th of August. Its president, Tan Sri Mohammad Norza Zakaria, said the discussion also needs to be attended by the National Sports Council, or MKN, to ensure that it is in line with the Road to Goal program. And it should also be thoroughly studied whether the Paris Olympics will use the target without medal color formula that was introduced at the Asian Games Hangzhou 2022. Well, met today, he said the Malaysian National Council Federation, or NFCF, needed to make a bold decision when aiming for a gold medal at the 2024 Paris Olympics in line with the dream of the national, national track cycling champion, and that is Dato Azizul Hasni Awang. Meanwhile, he expects the Malaysian contingent to be strengthened with 24 or 25 athletes compared to the current 18 national athletes who have qualified to take on the challenge at the Paris Olympics, in addition to hoping that the lineup of athletes can avoid any injuries. Asked if there was already a name for the flag bearer at the four-year games, well, he said there had been no discussion on the matter yet. Real Madrid coach Carlo Ancelotti denied that the Champions League winners would refuse to play in next season's expanded club World Cup, claiming comments he made to an Italian newspaper had been misinterpreted. Ancelotti had been quoted in Monday's edition of Il Giornale, saying that players had and clubs will not participate in the new tournament. Well, Real Madrid, who last season won the La Liga title under 
Ancelotti as well as a 15 European Cup and Champions League title were also quick to distance themselves from the remarks. Now the club said in a statement on its website that there has never been any question regarding their participation in the new club World Cup to be organized by FIFA in the upcoming 2024-25 season. It added that the club will take part as planned in the official competition and once again inspire their millions of fans all over the world with another trophy. The expanded 32-team club World Cup is proposed to take place next summer, adding to the already congested calendar for players. England's Professional Footballers Association has warned FIFA that players could go on strike. Well, Netherlands' delight with an emphatic 4-0 win over Iceland in their last warm-up match on Monday before heading to the Euros turned to despair. But it was announced that playmaker Frankie de Jong would not be going to the tournament in Germany. Now, de Jong has been battling to be fit in time after suffering several ankle injuries this season playing for Barcelona. Now, de Jong was included in Ronald Koeman's Euro 2024 squad despite struggling with his recovery, but has been forced to pull out of the tournament. He tried training for the first time with his teammates on Sunday after a week of individual work, but following examinations on Monday, doctors said he would not be ready in time. And that put a damper on Dutch spirits despite the impressive scoreline at the Feyenoord Stadium. 26-year-old De Jong, who is also a Barcelona midfielder, posted a reaction on social media saying he was sad and disappointed that he will not make it to the European Championship. De Jong played just three times for his club since suffering an ankle injury in March, and the Dutch prepared to face Poland on Sunday in Hamburg, followed by France and Austria in the group stage at the finals. Well, Yannick Sinner's anticipated rise to world number one was made official when the ATP released its new rankings, making him the first Italian ever to hold the top spot. Now, Senna reached the semifinals of the French Open, where he was beaten by eventual champion Carlos Alcaraz, who climbed to second, nudging 37-year-old Novak Djokovic, who has been number one since last September, down to third. The 22-year-old began 2024 ranked fourth but grabbed his first major title at the Australian Open along with a Masters 1000 title in Miami en route to becoming the 29th player to reach the summit of men's professional tennis. Being world number one, it's, uh, it means you had a great year. Um, actually, an, an incredible year with, with a lot of success. and. Obviously very happy about this. Um, in the other hand, um, you always have, have tournaments. Djokovic holds the record for the number of weeks spent at number one. His tally of 428 is 118 weeks more than the next best, Roger Federer. German Alexander Zverev, who was runner-up to Alcaraz in Paris, remains in fourth place, ahead of Russian pair Daniil Medvedev and Andrei Rublev. Well, that's it from us this evening. In our top story, targeted diesel subsidies to be redirected to the people. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Thanks for watching. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.